Hi guys, welcome to Ant's Adventure. In this video, I will show you how to build an epic ant farm. After a few weeks of hard work, multiple mistakes and countless tweaks, I ended up with creating this design. Do you like it? So before we start the tutorial, I want to introduce you to my Messel Barbarous colony that is about two and a half years old and in desperate need for a larger home. And I also wanted to give you a little sneak peek at my colony exploring their territory. More footage will follow at the end of this video. Oh look, one of the majors is coming to say hi. It really satisfies me to see them explore every part of their new home. Sometimes, when I observe the colony, I even forget about time. Am I the only one? Okay, it's time to start constructing. Here's a list of the most important things you need. At first, we will start with creating the nest and we will use Y-Tong blocks, also called AAC, to do so. You will need two blocks and luckily, they are relatively cheap. After you measure the correct dimensions, it's time to start cutting the Y-Tong. I do it with a special Y-Tong handsaw, but others might also work fine. Also, don't forget to wear a face mask, because the dust isn't too good for your lungs. Now it's time to start drawing the chambers, tunnels and the nest entrances. Just try to be creative and avoid that a chamber has too many tunnels leading into. You should use this type of drill. If you want to save yourself some precious time, make sure to drill the holes closer to each other. I ended up with hours of carving. Oops. A few hours later, this was the result. Now it's time to mix some plaster with water. Stir it and then apply it at the walls of the chambers and tunnels you created. I forgot to shoot footage of me applying the plaster, but here you can see what it looks like after applying. To give the nest a more natural feel, I mixed water and desert sand that contains a clay substrate. Mix it 50-50 and apply to the Y-Tong. Yes, the nest is completed! As you can see, I drilled the nest entrances and some water holes on each block. Larger colonies might be able to arrange the humidity by themselves, but it's always better to include them. On to the next part of the tutorial. I designed my aquarium and let it be built by a hobbyist. It features two connection holes and a removable top with ventilation and a special escape-proof mesh. As you can see, I elevated the bottom of the aquarium. This is to prevent the ants from crawling to places they aren't supposed to go, and meanwhile, it enhances the natural look. I used a special non-toxic aquarium silicone kit to glue the nest parts together. To keep everything in place, I used wood and therefore avoided the need of gluing directly to the glass wall. What better way is there to test my design than flying in some ants for a little test drive? I used the desert sand to fill the empty spaces on each side. It looks better this way, and maybe the colony will even use it to dig some tunnels. Almost ready! I used polystyrene to fill the inner section as much as possible before placing the top. 
In order to make it harder for ants to find extra ways into the nest, I am adding a line of sand and decorative stones on top. For the next part, you will need polystyrene. The goal is to escape a rock wall, and you can use these tools to help you achieve it. Just keep modifying until you are happy, and be aware of the fact that the layers of tile adhesive might eliminate minor details. It's time to prepare the first of three layers. Use the correct proportions and stir it heavily. Don't worry, after the first layer you will still see the actual polystyrene, but this will be taken care of with additional layers. Also important to mention, let the background dry at least a day before applying the next one. This is what the wall looks like after applying the third layer. Now it's time to release your inner Picasso and start with preparing a basic layer with a mixture of yellow, black and red. You should tap with the brush instead of doing strokes. For the second layer, I used a mixture of white and black and applied it with a tapping technique. For the third layer, I only used a tiny bit of white and applied it only to the surface areas. I added some black paint to create more shades and white paint on the edges for some extra effects. In order to keep the pieces together, I use this construction. I used silicone to glue the back wall against the aquarium. Done! I'm happy with the way it looks. This is the part that I probably spent most of my time on. I found it difficult to figure out how to decorate my ant farm and therefore I went to a local store for some inspiration. I purchased some cool items but had no clue how to position them. It took me a while to solve this puzzle but the result makes it worth it. For the main nest entrance, I drilled a hole in this wooden object that I glued to the bottom with silicone. I created the side entrances with clay. I also added a river for unlimited water supply. Let's hope they don't drown though. Yes, the last step, adding the desert sand. I present to you my first ever self-built formicarium. I'm prepping the ant farm for the arrival of my mesa colony by filling the water holes and adding seeds. Okay, everything is ready, Mesa Colony. It's time to start packing your bags. I will now connect the old formicarium with their new home, and I'm really curious to see whether they'll like it or not. What do you guys think?
After connecting the tube, there was an immediate response by the colony. They went exploring. Wow, what an achievement! This is the Neil Armstrong of my colony, first ant of the new world. A few seconds later, the family followed his lead and started exploring their new setup. As you can see, they started harvesting the seeds I put in place. However, I'm sorry guys for the bad quality of the footage. I should have used my Nikon camera, but I was unprepared and also a bit overwhelmed by the activity of the colony. Within five minutes after connecting, a large part of the population went on a mission. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope that you will leave a comment and subscribe. In our next video, we will show you what life inside the colony looks like after the big move.